trying to make sense of mathematics. So I like, don't mean that we'll uh, learn some hard mathematical concepts. We're just trying to make, trying to uh, do some real mathematical paradoxes. But first of all, I'm not talking about tricks. If you're interested, you can, you can check out in general Gordel's incompleteness theorem given by Kurt Gordel, a great mathematician, Kurt Gordel. Oh, well, it's Kurt. Okay, I hope you understand it. K U R T. So it is sure that you cannot prove that a set of axioms is considered without using another set of axioms. So see, prove that basically mathematics in itself is incomplete. So there are many tricks like three plus three if you take six minus seven by two plus seven by two. Why we took thirteen by two? Because the trick is to take something by two and that something will be that number times two, uh, two minus one that's six uh, times two is twelve minus one is thirteen sorry plus one twelve plus one is thirteen it's plus one right. so six minus seven by two whole square under root plus seven by two so if we uh, break it up that's a, a minus b whole square is a square minus two a b minus plus b square thirty six minus two times six of thirteen by two that's just six times seven that's seventy eight plus thirteen by two whole square is plus thirteen by two so this is just minus forty two plus seven by two whole square seven by two now uh, the trick is that what we had six uh, the original sum was six right uh, the original sum was six. So we uh, what six plus one that's seven. Now what seven square that's forty nine. So we need a forty nine here. So minus forty two we can write as forty nine minus ninety one. No, that's the same as writing minus four minus forty two, right? Plus thirteen by two whole square plus thirteen by two. Uh, now here's the magic. Okay. Uh, here's the magic. Forty nine minus ninety one plus thirteen by two whole square is thirteen by two. But uh, forty nine is the seven square. Ninety one can be written as two minus two times seven times thirteen by two. That's seven times thirteen is ninety one plus thirteen by two whole square. So this is under root of seven minus thirteen by two whole square, or just seven minus thirteen by two. We already had a plus thirteen by two, right? Here, so that gives us seven. But uh, six does not equal seven. Well, see, because this the second step itself is wrong. We cannot take a square root and whole square just like that, because then under root will be a negative value. That's twelve. Six minus two is twelve minus thirteen. That's negative half. So the whole square can be outside also. Who told you that the whole square should be needed to be inside? Moreover, uh, we're taking a square root. That means there is an ambiguity. So see, uh, moreover here we take the wrong equation. We get a plus minus up, but we, uh, we sh it, it should be minus up. But here we take the plus up. So obviously, thirteen by two plus one by two is uh, gonna be just like fourteen by two. That's seven. Here is a more uh, interesting mathematical trick. You can try impressing your friends with this trick. Uh, we have a polynomial x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So x plus one is negative x squared. That's obvious. And from the original equation, just take x common. So x plus one plus one by x equals zero. So x plus one plus one by x is zero. Zero by x. That's zero itself. So x plus one is we just shifting this with the RHS. That's my negative x, uh, one by x. But we already had x plus one is uh, negative x squared. So negative x squared is negative one by x. So just cancel the negative signs. So you are left with uh, just cross multiply. Left with x squared equals one or x equals q root of one. That's just one. So x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So that's one uh, in place of x you put one. So one squared is one. X is one. One is already one. So one plus one plus one. That's three equals zero. But it's uh, this is more impressive than the the, the previous argument. But this is wrong because uh, see the coefficients of x squared. So if we uh, consider the equivalent of the form x squared plus bx plus, BX plus c equals zero, the normal general form of quadratic equation, you get a equals one, b equals one, c equals one, positive one. So see, uh, uh, solving this by Schrodinger's formula, x equals minus b plus minus under root of b squared minus four. See, this is called the discriminant. This thing under the root by two a. This is minus one plus minus uh, under root uh, minus three by two. But this is uh, under root of negative is not possible. It is possible for that. You need to consider the imaginary number. See, you can write that minus root three is just negative three times minus one. But under the minus one is just i imaginary number. So you get root three i. But this is imaginary number. You get it in a complex number plane. So there are no real number, real value of x which will satisfy our equation x is equal to x plus one equals zero. There are no real value of x. So this is the problem in this case. Okay. Uh, but I'm talking about if we uh, talk about real mathematical paradoxes. See. Uh, Nature of infinity. That that has been a paradox. Even today we no I don't have any sufficient like information as to that. So let's say we what's infinity. It's a very big number. It's impossible to count. We all know that. Even a class kg kid knows that stuff. But if I say what's infinity minus one, what what do we say? Well, we'll say infinity minus one. So one is one is almost nothing when you compare it with infinity. So that's just gonna be infinity itself. What else? But see whatever it is, the one is a finite number. Whatever be infinity, we are just subtracting one, no matter what. So that means how can that be remain the same? Is the same the same symbol? See this. Uh, there is a very good, very very good analogy. Say we have a. In Let's try this out because this is a very important question. Let's uh, do it. Uh, oh, we don't have. Okay, let's do it in fresh. All right. Let's say. Let's say we have an infinite series of resistance. This kind of questions come in competitive examinations. 
So to find the equivalent resistance between the points A and B, so say everything is one ohm. Okay, I'm just for simple it could be anything else also. Oh, here also we have a resistor one one. The same pattern is repeating till infinity, till infinity, till infinity. Okay. So obviously such a circuit cannot exist in reality for that one infinite number of resistors. But if we assume the the equivalent resistance to be X, let's uh, assume. Okay. So what will it be? Mm, well, if we just redraw it, right? This is just one. This is just one. This again here we have a one, but this is just gonna be x, right? Well, uh, this is gonna be x. No, not this. This entire thing is gonna be x. One and this is x because we're assuming that this see this pattern is being repeated. This pattern. So we assume that this is x. Now, why we assume this is x? Because uh, one, one. This is almost nothing when you compare with infinity. That's the same case here. Suppose you have an ocean. If you take out one bucket of water from the ocean, will it make any difference? It will make a difference, uh, make a lot of difference. But uh, actually, it will not. The difference is negligible. The ocean will still remain an ocean. For instance, if you have a line, how to make this line shorter without touching it or without doing anything on it? Draw a larger line. How to make this line shorter? Draw a smaller line. So these are whenever you are using the terms much more, more, less, you are doing it that with respect to something else, relative to something else. So in this case, we'll get a quadratic equation and we'll get the golden ratio solving it. Okay, so that's not a problem. We just take one parallel to x, so, and this is in series. So one plus one parallel to x is gonna be x. So you just solve it out. That's not that was not original goal in this, in this video. Say one by zero that's infinite. Well, that's actually infinite. One is still a finite number, no matter how big when compared to zero. Uh, one by infinity is zero. So actually, this is not equal to. It tends to one by zero tends to infinity. One by infinity tends to zero. So tends to and equal to they are not actually equal. For instance, in limit concepts, a limit of uh, limit as x approaches a, x tends to have some a function. So we may uh, we uh, for this is a function we may have an incompleteness there. Suppose the function doesn't exist there, but still the limit uh, the the if we if the if we approach that point, the limit will be finite. The limit may be finite. The limit will tend to approach something. So but that's not that doesn't mean that that point is equal to something because that is in itself by definition that's undefined. So th these things are there. So uh, one of very one of the very good paradoxes I find it very interesting. Zeno dichotomy paradox. Well, this paradox very few people know of this, and this paradox is not given that much importance. But I think this is a very good paradox. Uh, just think of Zeno. He's he was thinking all these things sitting uh, back in his home so far back. Say we want to reach from point A to point B. All right, you can see the diagram very clearly. It's very clear. So first of all, to and say we have only one path. So that's th this path of uh, going from A to B. So first of all, we need to cover half the distance. That's half. They need to cover the the half of that distance which is left to us. That's one foot. We need to cover half of this distance again. That's half of this distance which is left to us. That's one by eight. We need to cover half of this distance which is left to us again. That's one by sixteen. But the thing is, the numbers are infinite. So this sum can go on till infinity. One by sixteen, we can still find the half of that. Whatever we whatever number we have, we can still find the half of that, right? So this is basically sum uh, uh, summation n equals one to infinity one over two n, right? So we may so, uh, try to solve this. I can solve this using modern physics, quantum mechanics concepts. I, I'll not tell you all this. Uh, how to do it right now? Because I, I myself am working on it, and I'm not completed yet. And more, moreover, it, it's just an idea. Okay, I'm not uh, saying that it is possible. I'm not saying it definitely. But the thing is that this is a good paradox. See, that means uh, this uh, uh, this infinite distance is actually finite. A B is finite. So that means you know, argue that we can never reach uh, our distance. We can never travel. Between any points, well, obviously this argument is false. We travel between uh, one point and another daily, so it could be anything, right? Suppose we have uh, this sum is actually infinite. Half that's one over two, uh, one by two to the power one, one fourth, one by two to the power two. So that's half plus one by four plus one by eighteen plus one by six plus one by thirty-two plus one by sixty-four plus plus whatever. So. This is the point. So this, there are many paradoxes. So obviously, we, if we use uh, modern concepts like quantum mechanics and everything, we may uh, try to resolve this paradox. But that, that's a uh, whole different story. So now we are, you are all aware of the Ramanujan summation. I hope. Let's just go over the basics. Now the basics will actually derive it. This is the most simplest derivative it probably. We have a uh, number say x equals one minus one plus one minus one till infinity. So. If if I take one minus x, so that will equal one minus this thing one minus one plus one and so on to infinity. So this is one minus. If I just remove the bracket, one plus the signs will get interchanged. One minus one plus one minus one and so on. But this thing is itself x. So if one minus x is x, one equals two x, or x is half. So we derive x is half. Remember that. We derive the series. 
and this time it's uh, 1 mi uh, minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 till infinity is y let's say right so um, what would be x minus this is our logic see we take x minus 1 because be before why we found the value of x in this case we took 1 minus x before uh, we had not any value any such series before x we started from this point right so that's why we took 1 minus x this is the logic in the next time we will uh, the next series will consider the third and the last will be z we will limit z or z whatever so in that case we will take y minus z so this is the trick now the trick this is actually uh, this argument is more substantial than that 3 plus 3 equals 7 argument by the way uh, i just wanted to point it out from this uh, proof 3 plus 3 equals 6 this is not a proof again this is just a trick okay so you can prove that any number plus any the plus the same number will is well apparently equal to that that the original sum plus one. You can see it's the same way you can prove two plus two equals five. Okay. In that case, you take four minus what's two square eight? Four uh, eight plus five is nine. Four minus nine by two plus nine by two. You can prove eight plus eight equals like seventeen and so on. You can prove uh, five plus five equals eleven. So here what's x minus y? 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 until infinity. This was x. Alright. What's minus? If you take y, that's 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 and so on till infinity. That's y. So 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 till infinity. Minus. Uh, we just remove the bracket. 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 4 until infinity. So now we take the first term from this expression and the first term from this expression. We write it together. No problem. No harm done, done in that. First, second from here and second from there. That's plus minus 1 plus 2. No harm done in that either. Third from here, third from there. This is the logic you follow. 1 minus 3. Then minus 1 plus 4. This sum is still going on to the infinity. Right. So that's no problem. So this is just 0. Uh, forget it. So this is just minus 1 plus 2 is just 1. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So 1 minus 2. Minus 1 plus 4. What's that? Uh, well, that's going to be minus 3. Uh, sorry. Plus 3. So see, we're still left with this 1 minus 2 plus 3 is original. Uh, original uh, y, the expression for y till infinity. So x minus y is y. So what's x? We already have that x is half. So half minus y is y. So half is 2y, right? Or this implies that y is 1 over 2 times 2, so that's 1 over 4. So now let's consider z, that's 1 plus 2, the sum of all natural numbers till infinity. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so on till infinity. So let's consider, let's tell, let's tell z. So y minus z, what's that? Which y 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 and so on till infinity plus we will follow the same logic okay same logic not plus minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 till infinity minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 I'm just remove the bracket nothing else so what's this well uh, so this will be 1 minus uh, we just find the same logic right so 1 minus 1 plus minus 2 minus 2 plus 3 minus 3 plus minus 4 minus 4 and so on so 1 minus 1 is uh, just 0, forget it. 3 minus 3 is just 0, forget it again. So this is minus 4 minus minus 2. This is again minus 8. Uh, so y is already 1 fourth. So 1 fourth minus z is minus 4 minus 8. And so on. So this we can take the minus 4 out of the bracket. Take it common and write 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on. So this is just minus 4z. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 2 infinity over z originally. So 1 by 4 equals minus 4z plus z. That's minus 3z. So this shows that z is nothing but minus 1 by 4 times 3 that's minus 1 by 12 the famous Ramanujan summation so first of all this seems nonsensical because how can an infinite sum like this is an infinite sum isn't it this is an infinite sum uh, where was that yeah z so it's increasing and it's all natural numbers so how can the sum end up to be negative what about how can it come in fraction uh, well but uh, here is uh, here is the catch this is the minus 1 by 12 is not the final word but if we take uh, directly our function, say we name it z only, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, that's standard to 7. Now I don't, so I'll, after still 7, there's a reason behind that. So let's leave the 1, the first number, okay. Plus, consider the, uh, leave the first parameter because we are leaving one, the, I'm just explaining the process. We are leaving one number here, right? So what's the first prime number, that's 2. So we will uh, start with the next prime number, what's that 3? So 3. So we'll take that many number of numbers that corresponds to the next prime number. So obviously this is going to be just three numbers. Now see so the sum of them, 4 plus 3, 6 plus 3 is 9. So that's a multiple of 3. So the middle term is a multiple of 3 itself. Plus the next three terms. 7 plus 6 is 13 plus 5 is well, 18. Plus, uh, okay, let's write it uh, more three times. 8 plus 9 plus 10. Plus it's continuing till infinity, till infinity, okay. So 10% is 19% is 27. 
So you see, all our multiples are three. All our multiples are nine also. So one plus nine common, one plus two plus three to the infinity. So this is just one plus nine z, right? This thing is z. So if z is one plus nine z, then z minus nine z is one, or minus eight z is one, or z is one over minus eight, or minus one over eight, whatever you say. So which is true? Is it minus one by twelve, or is it minus one by eight? Both seems like nonsensical. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, try some more methods. Same thing, same process. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten plus eleven and so on. So now you uh, leave the first two prime numbers, all right? One plus two. So you cut, uh, start from the third. We'll we discuss third prime. That's five. So take five numbers. Seven plus six is thirteen. So what's thirteen plus five? That's gonna be eighteen plus four. Gonna be twenty-two plus two. Gonna be twenty-five. Oh, that's a multiple of five. The next time numbers eight plus nine uh, plus ten plus eleven. Okay, right, let's, let's write plus twelve. Okay. So twelve plus eleven is just gonna be twenty-three plus ten is thirty-three. Thirty-three plus nine is just forty-two. Forty-two plus eight. Oh, that's fifty. So that's again a multiple of five. That's another multiple of twenty-five. So we, it's obvious that we'll get seventy-five next. So one plus two that's just three plus twenty-five common. One plus two plus three and so on till infinity. So three plus twenty-five z equals to z. This is the original function, the original expression. So three is z minus twenty-five z. But oh, but that's not that's nothing but twenty minus twenty-four z, or z is minus three over twenty-four. Again, we end up with minus one by eight. Good. Let's try with the seven, the next prime number. So in this case, we will leave one plus two plus three. Three primes we leave, and three plus one. That's the fourth prime number is seven. So and we'll take seven terms. So th one plus two plus three is gonna be six plus. Okay. Four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten till ten would suffice. So you see this entire term. Uh, well, it's ten plus nine is nineteen. What's nineteen plus eight? Uh, well, that's just twenty-seven. Twenty-seven plus seven. That's just excuse me. Twenty-seven plus seven. That's just thirty-four plus six is forty. Well, forty plus five is forty-five. Plus four is forty-nine. Wow, that's forty-nine. That's multiple of seven. Then we'll get forty-nine times two. This is obvious from the previous steps, right? So we end up with z equals six plus forty nine, forty nine common forty nine plus one, one plus two and so on. So that's six plus forty nine z equals z. So what's six then? Six is z minus forty nine z, or that's just going to be minus forty eight z. Well, you the solution is in this. The conclusion is in this table. So z is minus negative six over forty eight. That's again minus one by eight. So see these things uh, try to challenge mathematics. These arguments are much more substantial than the three plus three equals seven argument, right? But still, that that that's just, that that was a clear mistake. Three plus three cannot be equal to seven. But this argument is uh, we'll have a hard time proving this is a mistake. So this is these things uh, really are paradoxical. So uh, in our number line, we, we can never have that three equals two. See from here we can actually prove this. Okay. For instance, we have this infinite sum equals negative one by twelve, and then we already proved that the same thing is equal negative one by eight. So equating them, just cancel the negative. We just cut with four. So four three is twelve, and four two is eight. So if one by one third is equal to half, so that means three must equal two. By the way, if you once we have three equals two, that 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 means we are beyond the limits of a number line. You know, number line this can never be true. For for this to be true, we need to have one equal zero. So that means that is impossible. Then every number will collapse into one super number. Like in string theory, uh, tries to unite the every force into one super symmetric concept of super symmetrical super force, but obviously this concept will not work here. So now we can't say that three plus one equals two plus one, or uh, uh, that means uh, three plus one is four equals three. We cannot say why because three equals two we directly proved it, but now we cannot add one because once we proved it, this itself says that the number one has no value because if three equals two, then three then three minus two is zero. But three minus one, but three minus two is one again. So uh, this itself is paradoxical. Once we start from three equals two, we cannot prove anything based on the number line. Three plus one plus two plus one makes no sense. But still, uh, even if four, uh, yeah, four four equals two does not make any sense. That's fine, all right. But this, well, we uh, this we really proved it. So how how can we get over this? So like this, there are many mathematics is really paradoxical. Yeah, the real life is based on mathematics. Everything around you is based on mathematics. Mathematics work. If I give you three chocolates, will, that will not be magically become two, or the, or the other way around. That will not be the case. We all know that that will not be the case. But yeah, again, mathematics is paradoxical. That's, well, that's a fact. That's a fact. So uh, I think that we like we uh, discover this number and all based on our assumptions, right? So maybe this is not the final. Maybe when we try to. Uh, 
go beyond, go deeper. The paradoxes come up. Number line will work only in our system, not further. Okay. So these uh, sol uh, solutions uh, regarding these things have not been satisfied. Solutions have not been provided. Many people are coming up with many new proofs. But still, as we look into the issue, mathematics is still very practical. Obviously, it's useful, and it's like and like inevitable to use uh, if you don't use my math. The use of mathematics is inevitable in our daily life. So I hope you enjoy the video and. Uh, I hope it uh, opened up new horizons in your mind. So, it will be nice if you ponder about these things for some time. We may might come up with something. Thank you.